of fun when um, you get a beautiful, crisp sunset like this. Kind of the graveyard shift. Pretty tired, um, but otherwise things are going okay. Bumps. And bumps. We may be spending the next week here if our car breaks down. But whoa. No, no, this is enough. All right, we are headed down to Corfu today. Uh, we left Montenegro a couple hours ago, uh, kind of mid-morning. We had a, a good weather window to head down. It's about 185 miles from um, sort of northern part of Montenegro, Cortor Bay down to Corfu. Probably mostly motoring. We've been motoring for the last several hours and we just started sailing again. Uh, we've got a light breeze on our beam here and uh, we're plugging along at about five knots. So pretty pretty calm conditions. We saw some boat, fishing boats when we first left near the coast and then another sailboat that looked like it was headed off to um, over to Italy. And we're hearing a lot of Italian on the radio. As we head down on this route, we'll be uh, getting closer to Italy and uh, we'll be not too far off the shore from Albania. We'll be trying to stay off the Albanian coast by 10 or 12 miles if we can, just so there's no question that we're not trying to go into Albania. Um, but at one point, there's a really narrow channel between Albania and Greece, the island, and the island of Corfu. So we will be pretty close to Albania in that case. We left kind of mid-morning figuring that we would arrive tomorrow uh, by late afternoon and uh, have a little bit of cushion before nightfall. All right, we're about nine hours into our passage down to Corfu. Uh, we've had some sailing early this afternoon and then the wind kind of started coming right close behind us and uh, it would have made more sense to motor to keep our speed up. So we kind of set a target of four and a half knots. If we fall below that consistently, then we'd motor um, just so we get in at a reasonable time and not push it too late for the end of the day tomorrow. And now we just have the jib up and we're just motor sailing. We're doing a little over six knots. Nightfall will be here another hour or so. Um, we are doing two hour watches during the day and three hour watches at night. So it's uh, close to eight o'clock. I went on watch at seven and I go off watch at 10. And then Karen will come on watch at 10 and go till one. And I'll come on at one to four. And Karen will go back on four to seven. And then we'll probably switch back to two hour watches at that point. So, um, gives us a little bit of extra time to get some sleep. Uh, it's not great, but it's a little bit better than like a two hour watch. And then a four hour watch just seems like too long for the person on watch, so. So we're moving into our night watch mode, uh, turning the instruments on to red color to ease our eyes. And our char plotters just dim. They don't, um, I haven't found it like a night setting, but I can change the brightness, so that's kind of what we do. And um, we've tested the radar to make sure it's working okay, and it's on right now. And it's got a um, it's got a guard zone showing in front of us, about four miles out. So it'll warn us if it picks up any targets within that guard zone. So, you know, heading into the evening here, um, I, I I would uh, be remiss if I didn't say it's a little nervous because you you lose your vision. We have the moon coming up at around 11, so it's going to help uh, the second hour, second and third hours of Karen's watch. Um, but still, it's a little alarming, you know, when you're on watch by yourself and uh, you're uh, out here quite a ways from, long ways from the coast uh, and on your own trying to manage the watch so you can let the other person get some sleep. Should have a nice sunset tonight. The autopilot's doing well. Instruments are on red color, ease our eyes at night, the engine's working well, so everything's checking in good. Other preparation that we're doing, I've got a um, headlamp here 
that I can use. Um, I might use it for a little bit of reading tonight, but also if we need to move around the cockpit and see things. We've got some lights here, um, that lower level lights to kind of show the, um, the, the cockpit sole, but um, it's helpful to have uh, a headlamp there ready to go in case we need to open up lockers and get in, into any kind of gear at all. Um, I've also got a uh, tether here that I can use, ready to go. Um, I'm not putting it on me yet, but I can I can put that on if I feel like I need to. And then we also, the uh, together with that, we have these blue jack lines that go up each side of the deck. So the tether attaches to me, uh, to my light jacket, and then the other end goes on to the jack line so I can move safely up the deck all the way forward um, and not have to worry about if I fall overboard. We have a little briefing that we do for the person going off watch. They mention anything that was significant that they saw, um, anything they think the other person should watch out for, anything like with radar guard zones that are on or off or anything they might have seen on the radar. Um, so it helps to kind of brief the new person coming on and actually gives them a little bit of time to wake up as well. So it's not like a instantaneous thing where, you know, at 10 o'clock I'm going down and Karen's coming up at 10.01. Uh, we try to have a little bit of transition time there to kind of help the person who's coming on watch to kind of get their senses about them. Those are some of the, the um, precautions and steps that we take to make sure we got a safe passage. Time to say goodbye to the sun for the day. It's a lot of fun when um, you get a beautiful, crisp sunset like this. No land in the way, a little bit of scattered clouds, so it's going to be really nice. Beautiful way to end the day. And we're all out here alone. No boats within sight. No land in sight. Just us motoring along with our jib up. Hoping to get to our destination safe and sound. Four minutes later and she's down. Little remnants of the sun there. Probably it'll get dark here pretty quick. Not a lot of clouds up there to pick up the remaining hues of the sun. Some of them there, it's cool looking. It's about three o'clock in the morning and um, I've got the one to four p, one to four a.m. shift, so kind of a graveyard shift. Pretty tired, um, but otherwise things are going okay. We're motoring along in pretty flat seas, making about six knots, and um, so that's good news. Not a lot of waves, um, not a lot of contrary winds. Just mainly uh, keeping a lookout for other boats and making sure that we're avoiding them. And we've got a large, like, 40 meter motor yacht coming towards us. Looks like they're going to Montenegro. So they're on our same course going the other direction. And I'm just starting to see them on the horizon. There are lights, and I could see them on AIS earlier. Um, lots of fishing boats around, um, going really slow, but um, that's a good part. The other part is that they are kind of erratic. They're turning around, going 180 degree change of course suddenly, so you have to keep an eye on them for that. We were passed by a cruise ship um, headed down to Greece somewhere and uh, saw a couple cargo ships. So. Um, definitely a pretty busy area for shipping and we're you know, having to keep an eye out for that. We're getting closer to the Albania uh, coastline. We're about 15 miles away and we'll, that'll get closer and closer as we kind of turn around from the point of land off of Albania and then head further south, sort of southeast towards Corfu. So. Trying to hang in there for a graveyard shift. <laughs> Get to go to bed at four. Wake up again at seven to take over. Um, but at that time, it'll be light daylight, so it'll be a lot easier. So um, 
That's the report from the middle of the night on Sea Rose. Nine knots. Back down to eight two, but a minute ago it was nine three. And we were just becalmed like half an hour ago. Crazy. Wind's coming off the land now. It was coming directly behind us almost. I was having to sort of steer up course to keep the jib filled. And now it's like 90 degree different course. So we're humming. We got 17 knots of true wind. It's weird. Turning out to be kind of an anticlimactic ending, uh, last couple hours of our crossing to Corfu. Uh, we had some good winds uh, early this morning, and some doldrums, and some more good winds, and then the wind just died. So, right now we've got little ripples of on the water. It was like glassy smooth an hour or so ago. These are the mountains uh, along Albania. Really, really tall mountains. A little barren. Um, and that's all Albania over there. And just to the right of the bow is Corfu. So we're going to go through a narrow area there. Very narrow between Albania and Greece. From here we're flying home for two weeks check on things at home and uh, do a couple things there and then we come back and we have more guests on board for our time here in the Ionian Islands. We anchored around the corner from the huge Guvia Marina not far from Corfu town. We would stay on the boat for the night and check into Greece in the morning. We anticipated this to be a drawn-out process and business hours were pretty much over for the day. We swam, showered and rested after our overnight sail down from Montenegro. On a boat's first port of call into a new country, it is important to understand the country's current rules, restrictions, and requirements. We recommend using the website called Noonsight as a resource since specifics are constantly changing and these folks do a great job of keeping information up to date. For instance, Greece had recently instituted a cruising tax and a process for tracking all ports that cruising boats check into while they are in Greek waters. To be legally welcomed into Greece, several steps had to be taken. By midday on our second day in Greece, we were legal and touring around the ancient Corfu town. In the early evening hours, we moved Sea Rose from her anchorage onto the dock at the Guvia Marine for a two-week stay, the longest she has ever been on a dock since we've owned her. The next day, we rented a car and drove around the north part of the island of Corfu. These are some of the sights we enjoyed along the way. Here in the moment, we'll breathe in life. All right, so we're in a car on the island of Corfu, driving down to a beach. And this road is hideous, but we're going through some really beautiful areas with olive groves and everything. So we may be what and bumps. We may be spending the next week here if our car breaks down. But whoa, whoa! Oh my gosh! Hold on. Corfu, looking out over the channel, the 
across to Albania beyond that cruise ship is the land of Albania. And we sailed through here two days ago down from Montenegro. We are in the port of Kulara, not too far away from Corfu town. Kind of the eastern end of northeastern part of Corfu. We use the remaining days before and after our trip home to the U.S. for boat projects and for stocking up for our explorations of Greece. Wonder if you dream the way I do. Join us next time as we depart Corfu with our friend Steve and Julie to explore several of the other Ionian Greek islands. Thanks for watching. You get caught by your own thoughts like I do. Wonder what would happen if I showed these words to you.